I said, no, no cameras last night. No. I need to see y'all out here praying with them people. Them people was out here to take care of my nephew. Not this, not supposed to happen. I understand. Y'all was supposed to take care of my nephew. I understand. <laughs> So, tell us what happened the night the kids went missing. Okay. From our yard. So people have been giving the side eye to Trizel and Jacqueline West ever since they came out with their first and only press conference. It was December 23rd, 2020, more than two years ago, and they came outside of their house to a really angry crowd. Go in the house. Why did it take both of y'all to go in the house and leave them outside by themselves? I understand and that. And y'all know the gate you, was why, open. Why haven't y'all been out with the people around this neighborhood looking with we, 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 told, we already told we already on camera. That. And gave a press conference that had so many red flags, I started keeping count. I'm going to play that presser for you coming up. I counted at least 65 red flags. Let me know how many you counted in the comments. Trizel and Jacqueline were the adoptive parents of little three and four year old Oren and Orson West, two little boys that went missing out of California City. Trizel and Jacqueline claimed the little boys went missing on December 20th. 21st, 2020. But their story soon fell apart. Trizel with his arm steadily crossed holding himself, it drew comparisons to Chris Watts. The boy's biological mom even gave an interview that same day. She was heartbroken. She explained how she wasn't buying Trizel's story either. And, uh, she said she was wrapping gifts and she let my two kids out in the backyard because she didn't want them to see the gifts but you didn't let the other kids out. Where were the other kids? Why my two just go back there? <laughs> At night, she said it was dark and it's cold right now. So I know it was cold then. So I don't believe it. So when did she tell you this? Where were you when she told you this? I just came here 45 minutes when nobody was here. 45 minutes to an hour and we knocked on the door and it took them a minute to come and he came out and he want to say he's sorry and all that. I just don't feel in my heart that I, it's something. They're not. <laughs> Do you have a relationship with these parents? I don't the know parents? them. I don't know them. They did something. I feel like they did something and they know something. They did something. And I feel my kids is somewhere around here. I can feel it. And I feel like they're in the house and I feel like they did something. Today, all these years later, Thursday, March 19th, 2023, Trizel and Jacqueline have been arrested. And we're finally looking forward to these two little boys who are presumed deceased and they haven't been found yet after all these years. We are finally looking forward to them getting some justice when Trizel and Jacqueline's trial starts next week beginning with jury selection Monday, March 20th. The opening and closing statements of the trial should be televised from what's being reported by KGET. And even though the audio of the trial should be streamed on the Kern County website, I don't know if we'll be able to even stream it or rebroadcast it. I'm kind of over it with all of these trials making their way to court finally, only to be denied cameras in the courtroom so the public can't see really what's happening. If justice is being served, if justice is being meted out appropriately, appropriate punishments. We have the Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell trial coming up in Idaho. No cameras, but wow, we get a sketch artist in the courtroom. There are the court appearances of Adventures with Purpose founder Jarrett Lysick. Serious charges. We can watch them. We can't record them or rebroadcast them to you. What will happen in court with Trizel and Jacqueline West? Well, I plan to follow up on this case. In the meantime, as a refresher, or if you've never heard of the case, this is what happened when Oren and Orson West were reported missing on the winter solstice, December 21st, 2020. Their adoptive parents' lies soon started falling apart. Ultimately, cops say they have proof that the boys are deceased and that they believe Trizel and Jacqueline are responsible. Not only that, they believe the boys were taken off this earth three 
three months prior to when this horrible press conference happened. So watch it all, catch the lies, catch all the red flags, and stay tuned for more follow-up on this case, which I'm really hoping and praying we can bring to you viewers in a way where we understand what happens in court. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think of this presser. Number one, as you'll see in this opening video snippet from AV News Crew, visit all their links below. A voice from the crowd says to the West, no remorse, no emotion. I don't see no emotions, none. Immediately upon hearing that judgment, Trezell untucks his right hand from beneath his bulging bicep and adjusts his full neck gaiter face mask up to the bridge of his nose, letting his hand rest on his eyes briefly. I almost expected him to do the actor's trick of squeezing his eyes to make them appear red and weepy. Number two, in the coming segment, Trezell West immediately clears his throat. Is that a sign of anger? Trezell will practice more throat clearing sounds later in the interview, but for now he tucks his right hand back, gathers his emotions, and straightens his stance, ready for war with the media. No remorse, no emotions. I don't see no emotions. None. <laughs> Number three, ironically, years before this day, a Facebook friend of Trey West would question the whereabouts of children other than the two displayed in a photo with a woman who appears to be Jacqueline. On April 24th, 2014, a man asked, what did you do with the rest of them? Ah, six years ago, a woman wrote in Spanish, beauty of my children, God bless and protect them always. And that was years before they would even adopt Orin and Orson, years before they would face the maddening crowd. Number four, it's not often that adoptive parents who participate an oppressor nearly 48 hours after holing up in their house after their children were reported missing face an angry crowd of people and bio family members questioning their actions. Number five, Trezell keeps his hands tucked and hidden the entire remaining time, nearly 14 minutes that the press conference lasts. <laughs> Outside, yeah, like you fucking green with the yeah. Do you have a second one or no? What's that? Do you have a second one? Or second one. Mic them? Oh, this, everybody can fit this. Oh, oh, I didn't even. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I did right. I know Hey guys, everyone ready? 
<laughs> Number eight, Trezell asks or commands Jacqueline to speak first, as if he's planned it that way. <laughs> Thank you for the community for all the support we've seen. We felt so helpless. And seeing everybody out here really looking and helping out really means a lot. Number nine, Trizel's breathing. Watching his chest heave up and down, viewers can distinguish Trizel's breathing from that of the videographers. Trizel seems to try and summon deep grief or disturbed emotions several times after the mainstream media cameras are rolling. So, tell us what happened the night those kids went missing. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, number 10. Trizel's voice wavers, bending forward a bit as if his knees will buckle. From our yard, Jack will imprompts. Trizel will end up saying okay once more and feigning deep breath before launching into the seemingly rehearsed, it was cold, sermon in the street. So, tell us what happened the night those kids went missing. Okay. Oh my yard. It was cold. I was gonna make a fire. So a lot of wood in this area right here next to our house. Number 11. There's not a lot of wood, there's kindling, but as the 10 to life YouTube creator discovered, the Wests had a fireplace with a gas starter, so kindling could work therein. I open up the back gate, I'm throwing wood, bringing it inside the house. My wife's inside, she was actually wrapping gifts, she was actually wrapping gifts. Number 12. Trezell does not mention his wife's name, and he uses the adverb actually. It's unnecessary, and it could indicate deception. Why not just say Jacqueline was wrapping gifts? So we thought it was a good idea that they... That our youngest two. Uh, Number 13. They. That our youngest two. Trezell stammers and seems to be doing the most to avoid saying the names Orin and Orson, meaning bear and spy, per a West family member. Outside, we play with chalk on the back patio. Do not let them go on the dirt in the backyard. Number 14. Do not let them go on the dirt in the backyard. Why is Trezell mentioning dirt in the backyard? Why does he say do not let them go instead of I don't let them go on the dirt in the backyard? He doesn't say I at all. He does not use contractions like don't. He seems to focus on insignificant detail as opposed to more important details. Side and play with chalk on the back patio. Do not let them go on the dirt in the backyard. Keep them close. Number 15. We keep them close, Trezell claimed. Is that why no neighbors have seen the boys? It's questionable the most recently confirmed time the boys were seen by anyone. Was it September 23rd? If you watch the video titled Investigation Day 7, Second Interview, Casa Loma, Bakersfield, California, Missing California City Boys by AV Watchmen United We Stand, you will see that a neighbor told the YouTube creator about prior interactions with Jack Willen and speaks about previous foster children possibly being returned don't knock on the west door he's very mean they would go through the back instead of using the front doors or their normally designated parking spaces several neighbors have noted never did i see him with his wife one neighbor said it was always him she didn't see him with children either he used to get in his big van and take off another neighbor called it quick interactions the wests wouldn't talk much they parked in the back every time he comes out now he's covered up says the neighbor. They even spoke with little boys who played with the West's other children apparently, but they were called really silent kids, ones that didn't speak much apparently about what was going on. It's not clear if they ever played with other little kids in the neighborhood. Let's play with chalk. Number 16, the chalk claims. AV Watchman has videos about no chalk drawings being on the back patio only a few days after they were reported missing, then potentially stage chalk showing up in differing and changing colors. Were the boys really on the back patio drawing with chalk in the darkness? I came to the house, I saw them there. One house, I came back out, I didn't see them there. Number 17. I came in the house. I saw them there, Trezell says. I went in the house, came back out. I didn't see them there. He does not specify, I came in the house, I saw them on the back patio. Instead, he's leaving out important details that can cause confusion. Came back out, I didn't see them there. 
I immediately went back in, asked my wife, did you see boys? Number 18. I immediately went back in. Like 10 to life noted, why would Trezell go back in the house if the last place he saw the children was on the back patio? For example, where those two dogs are, if that's where he saw his children, why would he go back in the house? Wouldn't he immediately check the backyard since that's the last place he claims to have seen them right on that back patio? Did he come inside and perhaps use the bathroom? Did he frantically search around? Is that why he came back in the house allegedly and asked his wife if she had seen the boys? Or did he immediately come in and see the boys were missing from the back patio, but instead of heading out to the yard and searching all these nooks and crannies, he first came inside and asked his wife if she'd seen them? She said, no, they should be outside playing with Chop. I said, well, I didn't see them. So I came back outside and I started searching my backyard. I searched the whole thing. I realized that I left the gate open and I panicked came inside the house, searched the house, me and my wife. Number 20. Where exactly is the back gate and how far could a three and four year old run within seconds without being found? There's damning surveillance footage of Trezell and Jacqueline captured by a next door neighbor and displayed on AV Watchmen United We Stands and It's a Crime YouTube channel. December 19th footage may display only four children leaving the home. December 21st footage appears to show Trezell waiting calmly for police to arrive instead of frantically searching like he claims he did. Once that had not pan out, I got in the van, I looked down the street in both directions, it was getting dark, getting cold, and I got in the van and I hit a bunch of corners. Hitting them corners and them lolos, girl. Still. I went down this street, I turned my light on, I searched, I searched, I called their names. Number 21. I called they names, Trezell claims. However, no neighbors reported hearing a man calling Orin and Orson's names on December 21st, 2020, the night of the winter solstice, when Jupiter and Saturn formed a rare winter star. If you were searching for your own lost children, wouldn't you be screaming their names so loudly that many of your neighbors would hear you? Talk to a gentleman on the street on the other side over there, he didn't see him. Number 22, who is this mysterious gentleman that Trezell reportedly spoke with? Perhaps if he spoke with anyone at all that night, the man has spoken to police, but not the press. So then I came home and I told my wife, you need to call the cops. Right, it's been dark and I need help. We gotta get going. Number 23, no 911 call has been released. I found no BOLO, no police dispatch audio for incident 2020-00175-453 with an alleged timestamp of 6.54 p.m. per what police told YouTube creator Crenshaw Incorporated. So I called the cops. Cops came. First thing they did was tell us to stay in the house so they can get a hold of us. And they had us just sitting there and we wanted to keep searching. Number 24. The adoptive parents blame police for their absence during searches, even refusing to participate in prayer vigils, per statements from neighbors. Perhaps law enforcement wanted to keep the couple close. Number 25. Indeed, the cops, just like bio mom Ryan Dean, may have suspected foul play from the start. Per a woman recently interviewed by AV Watchmen United We Stand, Trezell may currently wear a big Big monitor on his stomach. Could it be a bulletproof vest instead? I've only seen ankle monitors used by police. I could find no visuals of stomach monitors, nor mentions of them. But everybody came out in droves, and I wanted to thank you guys that night, but we couldn't go outside. The cops told us the best are out here. The best are out here searching, and we appreciate it, and nobody ever could tell, we could never talk to anybody. Number 26. We could never talk to anybody, Trezell claimed. Even if cops immediately took all of their tech, it seems the West could have found a way to post messages about their boys and gratitude to the searchers somehow in those first 48 hours, besides during the presser. And that was the issue. We just want to thank everybody. We really want to and, thank uh, you guys. Please, if anybody has seen them, please call. Let somebody know. It, it, call the cops. Call California City. The city police department. Number 27. Trezell stutters and stammers at points throughout the video and often repeats phrases that Jacqueline says. It could be a sign of nervousness. Call them and let them know what you've seen, if you see anything. Our boys, 
they they are going to be rambunctious okay Ugh. Number 28, our boys, they are going to be rambunctious, okay, Trezell says, and makes a heavy throat-clearing sound. Once again, he doesn't use Orin and Orson's names, a sign of distancing. The throat sound may have been Trezell attempting to make it seem as though he was attempting not to cry. He will once again call the boys rambunctious later in the interview, perhaps as a means of victim-blaming young children for their behavior or trauma suffered. They are going to be here. Number 29. They are going to be here, Trezell said defiantly. How does he know where they are going to be if they're missing? Is he trying to ensure searchers stay in the Cal City area when he knows deep inside the boys are in a different location? It'll conflict with what Jacqueline says about someone possibly picking them up. In this area, and I really would like to go in the houses, but it's not because... I want to invade people's privacy. I just want to know if make they sure. make sure. Number 30, shifting blame to his wayward Cal City neighbors. Trezell says, I would really like to go in the houses, but it's not because I want to invade people's privacy. I just want to know if they, and that's where Jacqueline interrupts him, make sure, she says, so he repeats, make sure. It'd be interesting to see what he would have said. It's a common tactic for guilty parties when they're speaking with police to start helping the police by telling them all the other people who could have done something with the boys beside the person they're speaking with. What would he have said if they abducted them? What a fine way for Drizelle and Jackie to thank all the people who spent their time searching for the boys, diligently looking through their surveillance videos, talking with YouTube creators, and doing everything they could to help find Orin and Orson. Instead of just thanking them, Drizelle turns around and gives them a left-handed compliment by saying he wants to go into their houses to make sure the boys aren't there. Shady. That's it. Because I don't, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. If you got any questions? Oh no, you're good. Oh, okay. I, I was just gonna say, you know, this is the first time we're hearing from you guys, and I can't imagine what you guys are going through. I can't even fathom it. Um, Number 31. Strange head movement. Linda from It's a Crime noted Trezell's down and to the right head movement. You guys, for people who are thinking, uh... Did you catch Trezell's stress blinking his eyes as noted from Linda from It's a Crime? That's what we noted in number 19, and it's really apparent here and in other parts of the press conference. And a foul play involved. Um, you know, we just spoke to the biological mother. She says she had a conversation with you guys um, and that she thinks there's some kind of foul play involved. That she thinks you guys did something. That's understandable. What's your, what's your response to that? That's understandable. I would think the same thing. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly the point. And if we can find our, find our babies, then guess what? That's, that's no. Number 32, foul play involved? That's understandable, Trezell repeats. He doesn't say he never hurt his kids. We could find our babies in. Guess what? That's no. Just like when Letitia Stouck claimed she couldn't wait for Gannon Stouck to come back home so all the suspicious naysayers would be proven wrong about her. Not because she really loved and missed her stepson. It was all about her. And that's all I want is to find our babies. That's it. And I talked to her this morning and I really wanted to tell her that um, I am completely sorry because we were entrusted with our children and they came to us and they became our children and we named them. Number 33, I am completely sorry. We were entrusted with her children. They came to us, they became our children. We named them, Trezell says, without actually saying the names Orin and Orson. And is he only sorry for losing track of the children or something else. His statements show possession and ownership. And they are they are our children. And so we want them back. So please, if y'all could get back on your what you guys are doing. Number 34, get back on your job, was he going to say? Get back on what you guys are doing, Trezell commands. As if to say, nothing to see here. Stop looking at us adoptive parents. But don't worry, the world is looking for Orin and Orson. People are searching through surveillance videos. 
neighbors and friends and acquaintances are being interviewed. So we're getting back on our jobs. We should, we should be able to get a hold of somebody, but they took all of our tech. So they wanted to, I guess, uh, just rule us out, which makes sense as part of the investigation. So that's pretty much it. Have you guys, um, you talked to the police all last night? Yes. Um, what? So you guys willfully gave them your technology? Everything. Yes. The car? Yes. Did they get a, how did they get a search warrant? Did you guys? I, I, I don't, know I don't see why they got one, but they got one. Yeah. We would have let them take anything. Warrant. We would tell them take everything. We let them come in and search with us. We we asked them to come do that. What did they take? Just tech, and that's it. Like our phones. From the house, though, did they? Number 35. You should have been out there the first day, a person from the crowd says. Trezell turns to reporters and asks them, should I answer that? Or that's when reporters will tell Trezell to speak to them, answer to them. Answer it to us, yeah. Okay. So, into the, 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 the... Okay, I guess... I see. Yeah, we seriously felt like we needed to be out here. We did. Uh, again, we were told the best are out here looking already. Just to stay put, they have more questions. There was literally a cop with us the whole time in there. We got to sit him down. We would ask him to go help. They had to sit down. Nope. He said, no, we got the best out there. So we need not, you guys here to catch me up. I don't want you guys thinking we, we didn't try. We actually we looked tried. before we called We police. looked best. And I imagine the uh, mind-boggling part is the search for information. What happened? Where are they? Yes. Et cetera, et cetera. And, we're, yeah. and, and just so we are able to present the information correctly um at what time did you guys notice your kids were missing and at what time were they reported missing to the police it's about i, I believe i think it was about 4 30 it was getting dark like i said five that's about it 39 it was about i believe it was about 4 30 4 35 it was getting dark like i said trezell says five ish jacqueline says giving the couple a wide window of time, anywhere from 4.30 p.m. to 5.59 p.m. that the boys could have gone missing. Of course, this makes it harder to pen down times that neighbors could check their surveillance video. And was the plan to make it happen then as nightfall was coming, as confusion loomed? Did the couple plan to call police at that exact moment? That's when everything played out. Number 40, that's when everything played out. This is one of the biggest red flags. So much so that I named my first video about Trezell after that statement. It threw the AV News crew page reporter for such a loop, he walked away shortly after. It's as if Trezell is saying the acting scene began to play out, the action began. And then when did you guys call the police to report them missing? After we searched yeah. a little bit around here, we, it was dark, so we definitely were, we got worried. 41. Jacqueline deflects big time here. Instead of giving exact times, she says they called the police after we searched, then switches to, it was dark, so we definitely, we got worried. Instead of opening themselves up to scrutiny or criticism by saying, we noticed the boys missing at exactly 445, but we didn't call police until 545, or something to that effect, they speak in generalities so as not to get penned down on an exact time, an exact fact, or in an exact lie. Uh, Number 42. Why were both boys last seen reportedly wearing black sweatshirts and gray sweatpants? Did they have no individuality in their clothing? At least in photos they do. Perhaps the parents were just saving money and dressing them alike, but it's a, something that people have noticed. It was getting dark, getting cold, and I got in the van and I hit a bunch of corners. I went down this street, I turned my light on. I Number 43, which light did Trezell turn on? 
Does he have one of those big lights that cops use to find house addresses? And wouldn't the neighbors notice that if he were using some huge, powerful flashlight or some other kind of light? It seems as if he's indicating. Number 44. Even though it's hard to tell if there are any wounds on Trezell's hands via the videos, the following segment proves the camera person was suspicious enough to zoom in on Trezell's hands. If you watch it, you'll see coming up where the camera person zooms in several times. This is no doubt a seasoned professional looking for any defensive wounds or things of the like since it's two days after the boys were reported missing. However, there's nothing I can see on the onset. Report. Um, what? So you guys willfully gave them your Everything. technology? Yes. The car? Yes. Did they get a, how did they get a search warrant? Did you I, guys? I, oh, no I don't see why they got one, but they got one. Yeah, we would have let them take one, anything. But... We would have let them take everything. We let them come in and search with us. We, we asked them to come do that. What did they take? Just tech. And that's it. Like, uh, would, would you say it was maybe within an hour, a couple hours? No, it was within minutes of us getting finished with our search. Okay. It was within minutes. Number 45. It was within minutes of getting finished with our search. Trezell said minutes a couple of times, and the word finished is interesting. Trezell obviously wanted to note that they took only minutes to call the cops, but if your children are missing, would you say you finished your search? Indeed, in that AV Watchman footage where Trezell just seems to stand there and wait for approximately 13 minutes for the cops to arrive seems like forever when he could have been searching. <laughs> What do you guys want people at home to understand um, about this situation? For them, you know, even speaking about what you guys are feeling is difficult. What do you want them at home to understand about this whole situation? We're going through it. Number 46. We're going through it, Jacqueline says, turning the focus on what a hard time she and Trezell are having because of assumptions and conclusions, not because they miss Orin and Orson and what the boys might be going through. Folks often tell on themselves by speaking this way about what's truly in their heart. It's difficult. I, I mean, everybody's making their own, you know, their own conclusions. They don't know anything. We don't, we're not sure, exa like everything, we're not sure. We, we said what we knew. Number 47, they don't know anything, Jacqueline says, catching herself. What secrets do Jacqueline and Trezell know that others don't? Jacqueline kind of stumbled over that answer before saying that her and Trezell don't know everything themselves but it seemed like a little faux pas that let us know they know a lot more than they're saying. Number 48, why is Trezell hating indifference? If you see his Twitter tag, H8N, hating indifference. Indifference means a lack of interest, concern, or sympathy, something that the couple seem like they have. So why is he hating that? What an anomaly wrapped in an enigma. Like the famous quote goes, it is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. If he's hating indifference, is he a really passionate person? But has that passion gone awry in ruling his family with a militaristic thumb or worse? Where are the boys? And if anybody has seen them, uh, or anything, please call the police department. Would you be willing to provide pictures or do you have any? They, uh, I have older pictures. All my newest were on my phone. Okay. That's fine. Number 49. Were there no new photos of Orin and Orson on social media already posted that the couple could point the press to use? When exactly were the boys last photographed? Were the Wests so protective of their children that they didn't post photos? Or 
something more sinister. A lot of people are speaking of this as, you know, after the math, past tense. I want to talk about your kids in present tense. What kind of, what kind of boys are these? Tell, tell us about the boys. Very playful, very rambunctious, and they do love to wrestle. They, they do love to kind of get rough with each They're other. They're kids. They're kids. Number 50. It's very telling that the boys were described by their adoptive parents as playful, rambunctious, they do love to wrestle, they do like to get rough with each other. It's noteworthy that Trezell and Jacqueline didn't say things like, oh, Orson is so loving, sweet, and he loves baby shark, or Orin is protective over his baby brother. We didn't find anything about their attributes. We only heard about their physicality perhaps reasons why they may have bruises or something, or who knows, but the focus was on the physical. Of course, they would love to go out, but we would, so during the pandemic, we weren't trying to go, you know, out here. And so we stayed inside. Number 51. Trezell blames the pandemic for keeping the boys inside. However, keeping toddlers cooped up in a California city home all day and all night seems weird, especially when they could have been running around that backyard. Yet the woman right behind the Wests told AV Watchmen she's never seen Orin and Orson in the backyard. You would think during a shutdown, they would avail themselves of fresh air and let the boys run around in the backyard and play, shake their sillies out. Did you guys ever go out and search? Yes, yes we did. We searched before we called the cops. That's, that what, was, that's what we yeah. were saying. What time did they come up missing? They came missing right before it got dark. <laughs> And then we call. I, I searched that property. I even drove around the, the whole, this neighborhood right here. I even talked to a gentleman on that side, one of those streets over there. I said, "Did you see my some little black kids?" Did you and go that way looking for them. That's the way I was gonna come. But when I came back home, I decided to call the cops because it was dark. They couldn't have got away that fast. And, and why did it take two people to go in the house and leave? two kids out here by themselves. It should have been one parent going in and one parent right here watching the child. Not two parents going in the house oh, oh, and leaving so you, two little kids out here by themselves for 10 minutes. No, they were in the backyard. And so the back gate was open. the backyard? And the back gate was open and I was getting wood so from this guys lot. So you being unresponsible and left the gate open, left some little kids outside with the gate open. All right, uh, uh, sorry, uh, you guys were ta talking about your boys who you're, you know, uh, I understand. Um, for a mother, uh, a mother's intuition, I know you were saying, and we, we'll get your names after this, but you were saying how you feel like they're in this area. Uh, do you feel the same way? And what is the intuition? What is the sense you get? What do you think happened to your boys? Do you think someone took them? Do you think they're lost? Do you think yeah, definitely. I definitely know they're not walking around. They're not that kind. They're, they they do not just roam around. You know these patches. They definitely, I think, definitely would have been picked up or something. Number fifty three. How does Jacqueline definitely know that Orin and Orson aren't walking around? Why does she believe they've been, quote, picked up or something? Someone noted the strange phrasing of her saying, picked up instead of taken. Instead of saying, oh no, someone took my boys. She said they, they've probably been picked up or something. Did this couple cause or call someone to pick up the boys? Is that why she used that odd phrasing? Let's keep listening. That's, that was my assumption. Have they ever taken off of the yard no. before? No. No. They've never taken off of No. Basically, you guys are new to Cal City, right? Yeah. Yes. How long have you guys been living here? Three, three months. Do you have anyone it's crazy because y'all say y'all came out looking for the kids and y'all got neighbors that say y'all ain't even came out looking for no kids. The we, neighbors we, went out here. We were looking. We were looking. I'm just saying, bro. It's, it's, it's crazy, bro. I got kids of my own. Where do you I, live? I, them little boys that y'all raised, them is my biological I understand. family. I understand, bro. I don't leave kids oh, outside. Nine, and I, I understand. I have Three nine kids. Years. I have nine kids. There's, there's outside no in the backyard and I was watching. Leave, leave my kids unattended. Three not even for a minute. Like, 
You sit here. You sit I get. Like, we get that. We get it. Park, They're in the backyard. We feel it. But you said the gate. Oh, been, why would? Okay, y'all know y'all finna, y'all know days. y'all finna go inside the house, right? Yeah. Y'all are foster parents, right? No, no okay, we're adopted. But y'all parents. adopted them, yeah, right? Okay, children. shut the gate. Go in the house. Why did it take both of y'all to go in the house and leave them outside by themselves? I understand. And y'all that. know why, why the gate was why, open. Why haven't y'all been out with the people around this neighborhood looking with the kids? We, we, told, been we already told we already on camera. That. I seen y'all camera. no cameras last night. No. I didn't even see y'all out here praying with them people. Them people was out here to take care of my nephew. Not this not supposed to happen. I understand. Y'all was supposed to take care of my nephew. I understand. If anybody's watching at home who knows anything, or if you, if somebody who who has these kids, if they're watching, what is your message to them? The message has always been, as much as as soon as possible, call the California City Police Department, and please bring our babies home, and that's that. That's one of the reasons why we actually didn't want to. This do is the this. reason why, the because bi- we were. Bio family. We were As a member of the Bio family wails in seemingly deep grief or regret, and another woman consoles her, saying, this is not helping, Jacqueline and Drizel appear angry as Jacqueline splays her fingers in their direction, as if wanting them to back off and go away. Jacqueline then blames the biological family as another one of the reasons they didn't want to do the press conference, another person to blame for them hiding in the house. First, it's the cop's fault. Now, it's the biological family's fault. It's everyone else's fault except Jacqueline and Trezell. We're under orders to stay in the house and stay because they're going to need to contact us. And we could not, and we cannot go outside. And that was the issue. And that was the issue. We were under orders by the cops to stay home in the house and let the let the professionals look. But you just said that they were your children. If they were, if you, if they were your children, regardless of what somebody told you, wouldn't you want to go look for them? Well, we have cops actually posted in, in the front yeah, door right there. We, I totally we understand. We totally understand. We totally understand. If you guys please, if you guys actually have that question, we should ask the police officer. The situation, but do you see how it seems that the kids left unattended, you guys went in the house and then the kids disappeared. How did they disappear? Exactly, and that's the way we started to figure out. How? How? It, just, right it doesn't now. make sense. How, how did they disappear? How did they go out? You guys had the house supervised already. Number 59. A woman asks, how did they disappear? It doesn't make sense. Trezell turns away from her and instead of answering, he takes a deep blink as if he's trying to blink away some horrible answer to her question that remains in his mind's eye but he won't speak already and my question is why were they the only two children out where were the rest of the kids the rest of the kids were with grandma well, who? they left they went on vacation so they didn't no because they're too young we didn't we, we watched them and it turns out that- number 60 effing lie a woman yells of course of course jacqueline fumes rocking and ready to get this ish show over with she turns back to the reporters you can tell she's frustrated yeah that happened how do the All right, guys, okay, another uh, older. Uh, just really quickly before we forget uh first and last no names spelling of both uh no. for both of you guys so uh, excuse said it again uh, just first and last name uh, uh, spelling of who or what? Or just uh, your first and last name. Oh, our oh, names. Uh, Trezell Tra- West Jacqueline is T R E Z E L L West. Okay, and uh, for you? J A C Q U E L I N E. I'm sorry, one more time? J A C Q U E L I N E. Okay. West? Yes. Okay, guys. We'll let you go. All right. Sorry about that. Thank you for love. She probably wanted to feel bad. She probably wanted to feel bad. She Number 61. Jacqueline spelled her name so quickly, almost incorrectly, likely on purpose, throwing people off the trail. No wonder some people are calling him Trezal instead of Trezel. But the crowd was growing so angry, it's no wonder the West family is not in this home anymore and that the windows have been boarded up after angry people have thrown reportedly rocks or bricks at the windows. Number 62, per YouTube creator 10 to Life, find her link below, a female friend, perhaps vice president of investor relations at a mortgage bank, 
loan Trezell $5,000 to put down on the Aspen Avenue home after he was tapped out of money and needed to close with a USDA loan. Now, was she just a good, kind Christian woman perhaps wanting to see this couple thrive? Or is there something else in the mix? I don't know. A lot of us didn't find our mortgage brokers loaning us five grand to buy our homes. Number 63, off the grid with only four kids. In June 2020, Trezell's Aspen Drive home helper per YouTube creator 10 to Life not only loaned him $5,000, but also asked him, why do you want to move all the way out to Cal City? Trezell said, I want to get off the grid. She asked, how many children do you have? Trezell said, I have four children. When she peeked inside the white van, she couldn't see the faces of the children since it was dark inside. We all know YouTube creator Noor Jasmine has information about when the boys were adopted. Apparently sometime in 2019. Or later. So it stands to reason that Orin and Orson should have been there if this couple indeed has or had six total kids in their care. It seems as though there are too many instances of only four children being seen in photos or videos when it should be six children. Number 64. In an interview with 23ABC, Police Chief John Walker said he had not reviewed the December 19th video of Trezell and Jacqueline West. The California City Police Chief confirmed that more than 50 personnel from various agencies had searched Silver Saddle Ranch Wednesday for the toddler brothers reported missing on December 21st, and there's no sign of them. Walker also spoke about the boy's adoptive parents, physical versus circumstantial evidence, surveillance footage, and the tip that alleged the boys were seen in Tehachapi. But no suspects or persons of interest that can be named were named now, not yet, said the chief, who did admit that while circumstantial evidence points to foul play, no physical evidence does yet. It's not clear if the chief was telling the truth in that he hadn't seen the surveillance video yet, but he did speak about a private investigator. Number 65, P.I. Bill Garcia asked Albertsons to reserve footage in Tehachapi, but Cal City Police Chief doesn't know where the P.I. is getting his info. Garcia, meanwhile, claimed he was threatened, so the P.I. dropped out of the case. He spoke of his many years of experience in helping solve unsolved crimes and claiming his integrity has never been called into question. This is a strange case. It's starting to remind me of that TV show, Big Sky. It makes you wonder what exactly happened to Orin and Orson West. If you haven't seen my previous video, you can look into it more about Trezell West's 2017 job woes when he was owed money by Monument Security Inc. and listed in a 2017 bankruptcy filing. Did that money trouble lead to more troubles? Let's close with Galatians 5.16. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Thank you for watching.